Hey guys, so the two movies that we're gonna be talking about today are called Dances with Wolves and then The Natural. So I'm gonna start off with Dances with Wolves and that movie, um, it's directed by Kevin Costner and he also plays the main character, um, Dunbar. So at the beginning of the movie we see that, um, it takes place in like the, in the Civil War, right? So Dunbar is a soldier and um, at the beginning of the movie he's like he has an injury so he needs to get his leg amputated but um, he's like not able to emotionally accept that so he decides to go out into the middle of the battlefield and attempt to sacrifice his life um, and not have to go through like the whole amputation but that doesn't work out because um, his plan fails and he's not like he doesn't die and instead the his like um, his like his soldiers end up winning the war and he's like portrayed as kind of like a hero so he has to he gets to pick where where he wants to um like go and he decides to go to the western front so at the beginning he's there by himself but he ends up um he ends up running into the sioux native american tribe and so at first because he is like an american soldier they're kind of wary of him they don't really trust him that much but after like a while they see that they kind of like befriend each other and they start to gain each other's trust so through his um through his like time being with the sioux native americans i feel like that puts a lot of things into perspective for dunbar because being an american soldier in the movie the soldiers are portrayed as like land hungry power hungry they like they kill the animals to eat they like kill them for their fur and it's not really much of a coexistent relationship whereas with um oh and also the the american soldiers like they're things that they just um they're like prejudiced against the native american tribes and they just assume that all native americans are like savages so now that dunbar is actually like becoming sort of getting he's getting integrated into um the sioux tribe he's starting to see that a lot of the um a lot of the ideas that the american soldiers have about the native americans are actually wrong and so as he's getting acquainted with them he <clears throat> he becomes good friends with um a wolf his name is two socks and so the native americans they see that and that's how um dunbar gets his name his name he's um they call him dances with wolves so um i feel like this movie there's a lot of social commentary in it um like i kind of already talked about it but the american soldiers um they are portrayed as like violent you know um they like war they just want to attack the native americans and throughout the movie dunbar is trying to send the send the soldiers like warnings and trying to tell them that the native americans are actually peaceful and they don't like they're willing to um, build a relationship with the soldiers rather than just automatically like go against each other but the American soldiers are very close-minded to the idea and they just automatically assume that the Native Americans are savages and they need to be attacked and killed so that they can take their land however the social commentary isn't exactly just on American soldiers because there is a Native American tribe in the movie that is also very violent and that's the Pawnee tribe um but pretty much they are violent against animals against people and this just kind of um shows that the corruption is everywhere so it's not just the american soldiers that are um violent and it's not the native americans that are you know able to coexist with natures and others because the pawnee tribe is also shares, um <clears throat> shares similar characteristics as the soldiers um but yeah okay so then the next movie is the natural okay so in this movie the main character is hobbs right and so the movie begins by um him he's he's young and he is like at a carnival and he meets this woman and her name is harriet bird and he's with his friend and he like um he like is bet like they do a bet to strike um his friend out when i think his name is like whammer or Waymer or something and um hobbs like he wins the bet and so harriet bird is like super interested in him 
And then it turns out that she actually had a malicious intent, so she ends up shooting um, Hobbs in the stomach uh, in her hotel room at the age of 19. So that kind of puts like a pause on <clears throat> the development of his baseball career, right? So then 15 years later, the movie, um, in the movie, Hobbs decides to kind of take a shot at making a name for himself in baseball again. And so um, he makes his own, he makes his own baseball bat out of a tree that was struck by lightning. And throughout this movie, there's actually a lot of um there's like a lot of arthurian myth um like integrated into the movie so for example um <clears throat> hobbs hobbs's bat it, which is called wonder boy um it's kind of parallel to king arthur's uh magic sword called excalibur right so um both the sword and the baseball bat kind of have supernatural backgrounds like um the baseball bat was made from the tree that was struck by lightning which gives it sort of like powers um, that played a big role in Hobbs' Hobbs's success, um, like, in baseball. And so, yeah. So, um, the team that Hobbs plays for in the movie is called the New York Knights, which is also a parallel to King Arthur's Knights. And the, um, the manager of the team is called Pop Fisher, which is, um, alludes to Fisher King in, um, the Arthurian myth. So what happens in the movie is that, um... So at first, Fisher's not really fond of um, of Hobbs being on the team because he is like older. But one of the players, Bailey, he dies. He dies making a play, and so um, Fisher like he lets Hobbs have that position. And so when <clears throat> when he's finally able to like start playing and not just be on the bench, he's able to like showcase his true talents. And so he starts gaining a lot of success and like making a name for himself, like he wanted to. Um, and there's like, there's a woman named Memo, I think, or Mimo, Memo, and Iris. And so in the movie, Memo is more like the, she's like the, I forgot what the word is, but she's like the, the, the lady that tries, or like the, the mistress or the goddess that tries to kind of derail Hobbes from his path. Um, whereas Iris is kind of like an aid, and so she tries to guide him the right direction, she tries to help him, whereas Memo is kind of like, um, a negative influence. But anyways, so Hobbs, um, Hobbs and the judge get into, like, okay, Hobbs goes to the judge, and the judge wants to pay him money so that he'll throw the game. And this movie is based on a novel, right? So in the novel, the way that the novel ends is that Hobbs takes the money and he throws the game, and it's like, not really happily ever after um but in the movie um because this movie and Hobbes' journey is like really similar to the hero's journey there's the initiation when he decides to go back into baseball and like all this and that um in the end to kind of complete the circle uh he doesn't give in to the judge's bribe and instead he decides to win the game so the end of the movie is a victory for the new york knights and it is a happy ending. So at the end of the movie, you see that uh, Hobbs and Iris kind of end up together. And he also ends up with his son. So the, la the, the ending scene is Hobbs playing baseball on the same field that he used to play with with his dad. And like Iris is watching them. And so it's like pretty wholesome. But yeah, there's like a lot of Arthurian elements in this movie. And yeah. So that is it for me. I hope you guys had a great semester and thank you for watching.